to Dice Baker where today I'm going to be making the little trains from Ticket to Ride. If you're not familiar with Ticket to Ride, it's what's considered a gateway game, so it's pretty simple um, kind of game to get into for anyone who's just getting into board games. So if you haven't tried it, you should give it a go. Um, you're essentially putting trains um, around the country trying to connect longest routes and, and you have these like tickets uh, which shows you routes that you're trying to connect along the way as well and you're trying to earn the most amount of points points along the way essentially. Pretty simple uh, but nice little game, um, family game or you know for, for everyone really. Um, so I'm going to be making the little trains from that. Um, now there's a few different ways that I could have gone about this. Um, the way I'm going with it today is I'm making a carrot cake so I'm essentially making a tray bake where I could cut out the kind of re rectangles, yes the rectangular shapes to make the trains and then I'm going to use rolling fondant, or fondant, I don't really know how to pronounce that, to um, to cover those little kind of rectangular cake pieces and hopefully make it look like the actual trains. Now, I don't know if I've ever made carrot cake before. It's one of my favourite cakes of all time, um, but it seems pretty straightforward. I've made cakes before and it, this one is one of those kind of ones where you just smush everything into a bowl and mix it together so it should be pretty straightforward uh, fondant I've never worked with I'm not really a big icing person so it's just not something I usually do when I bake uh, I'm more of a lemon drizzle kind of kind of gal I guess um, keep it straightforward and all that so yeah the fondant thing will be a bit more interesting but I've watched one or two videos and hopefully that'll help um, and yeah let's hope this works out I'm gonna start by measuring out the ingredients I don't know about you, but this is still my favorite part of baking. So I've stuck the mixture in the oven for about 40-45 minutes. Essentially, you want it to come out um, clean if I put a knife into the middle. Um, be a bit springy, but like still quite soft. Um, so I'm going to check it around the 40 minute mark and potentially a bit longer. Or take it out at that point um, and then I, after that I'm gonna be just leaving it cool for a while um, because I want it to cool completely before I put the fondant on okay time to check on that cake here we go yeah looks good Ready to rock and roll. Um, so I'm going to leave it cool in the tin for five minutes. Then I'm going to transfer out of this tin onto a dry, um, drying rack, I was going to say, onto a cooling rack. Uh, I'm probably going to leave it for close to an hour just to make sure it's really super cool. And in the meantime, I'm going to um, prepare the fondant that I need to put over it. So the cake is still cooling down, but I've decided since I'm going to be putting on the buttercream and the fondant um, once I've cut it up, I'm actually going to cut it up now because it'll only help it speed up um, cooling down. So I'm going to start cutting it into its shapes now. It should be pretty simple because at the moment it's a square and I want to make it into maybe, I'm guessing I can probably get like six rectangles. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'll give it, I'll just eight rectangles. <laughs> I'll start cutting it. Um, it's not completely even, so I might not get eight trains out of it, but I might be able to get six trains out of it. Um, either way, I'm going to cut it up now and let it cool off a little bit longer, and then we'll be on to the next step. Here you can see I've cut it up um, into, I guess, eight rectangles, but I don't know if you can tell from that angle. From this angle, you'll see that it's not entirely even. So you'll see that it actually droops down a little bit on the left, 
I'm pretty happy with the other ones on this kind of right side here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to be using these guys um, for my train building. And these ones I'm just going to leave and eat them as they are. Nom 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 nom. Hmm. So far pretty good. Nice and soft. Still quite warm. Um. I feel like I could have done it with some more carrot and it does seem like the raisins kind of sank down to the bottom. I think it's a bit too much raisin not enough carrot in my in my mind to be honest but the rest good. Almost forgot I have to make buttercream. Woo. Uh, again something I've never done uh, but it seems pretty simple it's even written on the actual box itself. So I'm literally just mixing butter and some icing sugar, a little bit of vanilla extract and a little tiny, tiny bit of milk just to loosen it up. Um, I'm going to mix that all together while I'm waiting for the cake to cool um, and then I'm going to roll out the fondant and then what I'm essentially going to be doing is applying a thin layer of buttercream and then putting the fondant on top of it. Seems pretty straightforward. All right, the cake is nice and cool. Uh, I'm gonna start kneading the fondant and rolling it out. The good thing is obviously I don't have a round shape that I'm working with, so that should hopefully make things a little bit easier. Um, also, I'm doing lots of small cakes, so I'm not gonna have to roll out like one really large one. What I'm gonna do instead is like, uh, like measure out loads of small fondants, I guess. Um, and then I can do each one individually. I'm hoping, uh, this will be quite simple and actually I want to have a bit of fondant left over that I can kind of like do the little sticky out bits like I guess the windows and stuff like that I don't really know what bits they are but they're little bits on the actual um, tick to ride trains that kind of stick out a little bit uh, here and there so just to get those little details in as well So here we are, I've got my lovely little cake board that rotates which is completely unnecessary because I'm not doing a round cake but whatever. Um, I'm gonna go with this piece of cake because it seems like the most even. I've got my buttercream icing over here. I'm gonna start by sticking some of that on the cake. No, I don't want to go too crazy with it, I kind of just want like a, um, a thin layer of buttercream all around. <laughs> this is clearly my first time using one of these. Uh, and when I say one of these, I mean literally every bit of this. First time using one of these palette things. First time using a cake rolling thing. I want it to be fairly evenly distributed so that when the when the fondant goes on that it goes on quite evenly as well. So what I'm finding so far using um, carrot cake and applying this buttercream is that it's quite crumbly especially with the raisins. Whenever there's like raisins kind of poking out it's just kind of crumbling a little bit. Um, because obviously the raisins just falling out and then the um, cake around it is just falling off with it so that's a bit annoying um, I guess if you're doing a whole cake as it is that's not an issue but because I've cut up the cake it's gonna be a bit looser and the edges so that's my issue right now okay I think that's pretty much all the sides covered now it's just about trying to Get them a little bit more even. <laughs> God, this is such a mess. I mean, boop. <laughs> um, okay, now, the lady who I was watching was doing this on a round cake. So 
so this is gonna be a little bit different but essentially you kind of pull it down and then pat down the sides I should maybe pat it the upper bit as well now it should be a little bit easier for me to do this um, than if I was doing a round cake because I can hide things on the edges so I can essentially I might just make a cut here would that make sense no I'm not gonna do that I'm just gonna try and get it all in one piece without me making any cuts except for obviously the bottom which is overflowing yeah. it's kind of looking more like a London bus and to be fair I only own Ticket to Ride London Edition, which actually comes with little London buses instead of trains. So that's definitely what I'm going for here. Okay. Um, now I'm not like going too crazy on it because I've got one of those like smoother things. I don't know what you call them, but the things that you smooth fondant with. So I, once I've kind of gone the whole way around, which this is like the last corner here, I'm gonna go over it with the smoother. Now she said this can be a little bit tricky because obviously, oh, see? Again, you just kind of pull out the sides and then press it down. I'd like to use some of these pre-rolled bits to do the details in a moment. And now I'm gonna use this weird contraption and like smooth it around I guess again don't really know what I'm doing but just going with it okay so that's looking pretty fairly even and nicely done I guess I'm gonna try and do the details now it's a bit annoying because I don't have an actual train with me. As I said, I only have the London version, which is got, which is a bus. And if I was doing that, I'd have to do like a big cut, and it would be a whole ordeal. So I'm still gonna go for the trains, but I'm looking at a picture of one online. And so what we want is a strip that kind of goes along the top here. Now again, this is not like perfect. I am just really much, very much winging it. Um. I cut this freehand. Just having fun with it, really. Goosey goosey. There's like a little bit that kind of pops up around here. And then there's like three little bits that pop up from that. So I can grab one of these. I'm just gonna make them into little balls because I can't really tell what they are. Little ball here, little ball here, little ball here. Just squish it in. Um, they don't have to be round. And then we've got these little T shapes that kind of go along the sides. So again, I'm just going to cut them freehand. So I made a little shape like this, like a T. I'm going to use that as a template for the other ones because I do want these to kind of be, at least on the, while they're on the same train, be the same as each other. I don't think they need to be the same across all of the trains. Um, but just try and keep them looking alike while they're on the same little piece of cake. We have three of them and they're going to go, I'm going to keep one so I can use it as a template in a moment, but they're going to go along the bottom here and so it's like an upside down T. Got a little guy here. Little guy in the middle. And then as I said, I'm going to use the other one to measure the ones for the other side, but then there'll be another one on this side and then the same on the other side again. And this is pretty much what the train looks like. Um, it's obviously, my version's a little bit rounder, a bit messier, uh, but that's pretty much the, the, the big idea. I'm gonna do um, all the rest of them. So uh, as I said, I've got 
uh, six to do all together. Um, it does look like I'm going to be doing it red and yellow. Um, but yeah, it's just rinse and repeat at this point, really. That's it for another episode of Dice Baker. Thank you very much for joining me. Um, obviously, this week we made some fun little um, carrot cake trains. Last episode, I made a gingerbread dice tower. Um, and before that, I made some azul tiles. Um, if you have any suggestions at all of anything you'd like to see us make, please comment your suggestions below. Um, I do read all the comments and um, I've got plenty of ideas myself, but also would appreciate if you've got anything you'd like to see us make, and I'll try and prioritize your own ideas above my own. Um, otherwise, again, thanks very much for watching. Um, there are more Dice Baker episodes available, as well as Dice Breaker, where we have reviews, playthroughs, and much, much more, as well as obviously our website, dicebreaker.com. Oh my God, there's so much for you to check out. Um, videos should be popping up on the screen right about now, so you can always click on one of those to see what else we've got going on. Um, if you hit the subscribe button, you'll um, be in the loop for when we post further videos. And if you hit the bell button, you'll get notified when we post more videos, which we post all of the time. Um, that's it for now. Thanks again for watching and have a lovely day.